In this episode, we sail from St. Martin to Cuba, tear our jib and have to switch it out, we get slammed by massive waves, and our mainsail traveler catastrophically breaks from an accidental jive. Last time on Sailing Valachandra, we do all of our planning and preparation for our long passage and extended cruising of the country of Cuba. Hey everyone, if you're new to the channel, I'm Dan and my partner is Noel, and we are sailing Valachandra. We sailed from Nova Scotia, Canada to the Caribbean. We've been sailing around the Caribbean for well over a year now. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel, just go below this video, look for the big red subscribe button and press that button. sailing from St. Martin to Cuba. We left St. Martin around noon and we're doing great. We're only in about 15 knots of wind, but we've got both sails up straight downwind. Believe it or not, we are directly downwind sailing wing and wing. There's a little bit of roll, so it's making it a little difficult to keep the wing and wing, but the autopilot's performing great. The sails are great, everything's good. It's really important if you're gonna go wing on wing that you have a preventer on your boom and you're gonna need a whisker pole or a spinnaker pole on your Genoa and your, or your jib because it's just gonna flug like crazy. So that's our setup right now. We've got the pole out, we've got a preventer on the boom and uh, it's holding pretty good right now, but we're debating whether we're gonna keep it like this overnight because you know there might be squalls or something and uh, I wouldn't wanna to have to deal with all this extra rigging that we've put up. Everybody. It is day two of our trip from St. Martin to Cuba. We woke up this morning to a little issue. We have a small tear, well actually a fairly big tear in our jib and uh, we need to change the jib. That's really hard to do at sea, especially if you've got wind, any wind at all. So we're just getting close to the USVIs here now and I'm considering just dropping the hook somewhere here for a couple hours just to change the jib and then continue on our way. We have another jib. It's a larger jib. Uh, I usually don't fly it because it's so big, but uh, it should be okay if we need it smaller, we can furl it half in and go from there. And we were talking about putting that bigger jib on anyway, so you know we're gonna have to do that because if we get into any more serious wind, these tears in the jib that we have right now could just destroy that jib. You know, we're not ready to say goodbye to this one yet, so I think uh, we're gonna try to stop and change it and hopefully it won't take that long and take too much time out of our journey and we can continue on our way. We're sailing past Puerto Rico right now. Our morning's been okay. We did do wing on wing, but he wanted to leave it up all night. And then eventually he said, no, it's too noisy and too frustrating, which I'm glad he put it away. But as we were putting it away, a squall hit and we ended up doing like three 360s because we couldn't keep the boat straight. That was fun. We flew the main pretty much all night alongside with the jib just to get that extra windage because it was pretty light winds all night pretty much. We had maybe like two accidental drives. Dan lost his. Always on day one, he's the worst. We managed to drop the anchor in the USVIs and switch out our jib sails as the tear in our previous jib was like about that long. And we've been sailing on it for the past 14 hours. So it was time. Wind's light enough to be flying the 135. So we're happy to be flying it. and. 
I'm glad that the wind died down in order for us to do that. That's pretty awesome. And I got a chance to get some cooking done and got our lunch in us and that was great. Happy to be using the whisker pole, although Dan's been cursing and all frustrated with it. He's not used to changing it over so often. We actually forgot to switch sides and ended up losing our baby stay. Kind of just snapped right off. That was fun. I don't think it's a big deal though. Uh, Dan Jimmy rigged it, so it should hold up just he never fine. Used it anyway. While Dan was switching out the sheets, I had some downtime to do some meal prep and made Zeus a gourmet meal of peas and hamburger meat. He's so fussy when we're underway, he won't eat his regular kibble. He has to have something extra special. Zeus has been good. He had the shakes a bit yesterday, but he's feeling much better today. He's realized that this is what sailing's all about. It's been a while since we've done a long trip, so. Buddy. Buddy, hi. The seas are calmed down so much. It's a lot more comfortable than yesterday. Yesterday, it was a bit of a confused sea shape. Today, it's much smoother. We didn't sleep much. I always find the first day of passage very hard to get into that rhythm, but today we're feeling a lot better and a lot more confident. day three of our passage and it's been good and it's been bad. <laughs> we did get our jib changed as Noel told you and that's been really good. Uh, we're happy to have the big jib up and I recently refurbished this jib just before we left Nova Scotia at North Sales and uh, so we know that this jib is 100% and there's nothing wrong with it so it's nice to have that and not worry about it. And we're doing like seven knots and we're going downwind and that's fantastic. So we're really happy. We're right in between Puerto Rico and Dominican Republic in the Mona Passage right now. We're just above the Mona Passage and we're looking for whales because this is the part of the Mona Passage where you can spot humpback whales. So uh, we're hoping to see something and we got the camera ready so if we see it, we'll, we'll capture it. You know, we didn't even notice it until this morning. Like yesterday, we once we had the big jib on, we took down the main and didn't think anything of it. So I got looking at it and on our traveler where the car attaches to the main sheet, there's a shackle there that's built into the car and it's snapped. And we're really lucky it didn't happen while we were underway with the boom taking full force because, whoa. Oh, see, it did that again. Stop, oh, stop the video, stop the video. All right, so I had to take the wheel because um, the autopilot didn't really hold the uh, course really well and started sending us on a beam reach and we're supposed to be going downwind. And we're in at least 20, 20 to 25 knots of wind right now going downwind. And uh, our autopilot's actually been working really good. I learned that if I change the response time to one, that going downwind, it seems to work better. It's more responsive and keeps us on track, which is nice. So yeah, we noticed that that connection piece had broken. And it's a really good thing that we noticed it and didn't try to sail on the main because if that snapped underway or gave way while the full force of the wind was on the main, your boom could just swing right out wildly. And it would be a real challenge to try and bring it back in. And it could actually snap the gooseneck right off the mast. Worst case, you could take your mask down, so it's really bad. So it's a good thing that we noticed that. So we're going to have to jimmy rig something with lines and pulleys to act as a traveler for us until we can get our traveler repaired. But 
I don't see it as an emergency at this point because first off, we're mostly downwind sailing, so we're gonna sail on the jib. And there's a lot of boat rigs that don't have travelers that just use lines and pulleys to control the boom. So we'll just rig up a very similar system until we have a chance to re repair our traveler. Easy bear. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, just go below this video, look for the big red subscribe button, press that button. You can leave a like or a comment. And if you haven't checked out our Patreon page, it's always a good time to do so. Patreon's a place where you can give back if you like what we do and you want to support us. Thanks. See you later.